And joining us right now via Skype is Professor Janet Smith, a contributor and editor of the book that Bishop Reed is holding, Why Humane Vitae is Still Right. Thank you so much for being with us, Professor. Thank you. It's good to be here. So it's 50 years. Hard to believe that uh, Humane Vitae came on the scene. And in many ways, it foretold of the objectification of women and the hashtag Me Too movement as well. What, what can you share about that? Well, that's certainly what uh, now Saint uh, predicted in uh, Humani Vitae Section 17. That four things would happen if the culture widely accepted contraception. And in fact, by 1968, it pretty much had. But of course, it was a short period of time. The pill was just invented in, in the 19 in 1960. But he said that men would have less respect for women, both physically and psychologically. He said there would be a general lowering of morality. He said that governments would use contraception for um, nefarious, oppressive purposes, and that we would start to treat our bodies like machines. And I think each one of those has come, through, come true abundantly. We have incredible amount of scientific data to show that it's true. I think there's a, a great connection with the um, acceptance of uh, homosexual acts and same-sex marriages. Uh, nobody predicted the acceptance of transgenderism, but that's certainly, in a sense, our way of treating our bodies like machines. We decide what they want to be. And this all goes back to saying that we don't need to respect our bodies for what they are, that God made the body in a certain way. And this gift of sexuality, and honestly, the gift of being able to have a baby, appropriate meaning of the sexual act, we've te we tend to treat as though it's um, a negative, and contraception treats procreation, the possibility of procreation as a negative. So contraception is a way of altering our body. It's saying fertility is not a good thing. And so once you start saying, I'm not going to accept my body the way that God made it, I'm going to treat a good thing as a bad thing, then we start saying, I can do anything I want to with my body. Whatever I don't like, if I don't like my right arm, I can, I can have it amputated because it's my body to do with what I want to, as opposed to a great gift from God. Janet, I have to ask you, you know, 50 years later, uh, the words of Pope St. Paul VI uh, reflecting on the document Humane Vitae, and you're preparing for this book. Were there any surprises for you? Surprises 50 years later? Yes. Just as you were, as you were editing the book, you know, did, did anything strike you that had never, it had never oh. occurred to you before? Well, oh yes, so there are many good essays and, and lots of good angles. There's one by um, Angela Lanfranchi who talks about if we'd known then how harmful the uh, steroids, which are basically the artificial hormones that are in the, contracept the chemical contraceptives, if we knew how bad they were for women, that would have been a whole new angle on what was wrong with contraception, the, how bad it is for women's health. Uh, how bad it is for relationships. It radically changes male-female relationships on a chemical basis. Men are more attracted to women when we're in our fertile periods, all right? And a woman who's using a hormonal contraceptive has no fertile period. So she's reduced her attractiveness to men by using uh, chemical contraceptives. And they're now talking about epidemics of sexless, sexless marriages. <laughs> it's very sad. The church, is, the church is going to soon be the one voice that can explain um, what makes for a sustained and happy and, and satisfac satisfactory sex life. Because the culture thinks it all has to do with sex whenever you want it, on any terms you want it, with whomever you want it. And the church says, no, the only way you're going to have a satisfying, sustained, satisfactory Sex life is really to uh, respect your body, be married, be married to someone that you're committed to for the rest of your life, and be open to children. And those are the people who have that, the, the happiest sex lives. Uh, and you touched on it there, but there, there are some really uh, in influential contributors to this book. Tell us about that, putting it all together and having uh, these great contributors uh, in the book. Uh, it, well, it's a wonderful thing to work with such people. I mean, they're very, very smart. They love the church. They have uh, all kinds of different expertise, uh, scriptural scholars, scientists, uh, philosophers, just simply married people writing from their experience. And so uh, they're people who really are eager uh, to help other people find the truth. And so even though they're extremely busy people, when I contact them and I ask them, would you like to, to contribute to this volume? It's like they're ready to drop everything 
and and do what they can. So it was it's a joy. I learned a great deal, as you said, from from working on it. Tina, I want to thank you for uh, for putting this great work together. It sounds like from everything you're saying, and other opinions that I've heard that that Humani Vitae is needed now, perhaps more than ever before. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And I, young people are catching on. It's amazing how many young married women, um, those who are faithful churchgoers, are living by this church teaching and find it to be true and satisfactory. Dr. Janet Smith, it's been great having you on the show today. Thanks for making the time for us. Where can people uh, pick up a copy of uh, their own copy of uh, this book, Why Humani Vitae is Still Right? Yeah, it's published by Ignatius Press, and I'm sure they'd be happy to send someone one. Just go online and order through Ignatius Press. Easy enough. Well, listen, have a great rest of the week. Uh, happy All Saints Day and Halloween as well to you. And Thank we're, you. Yeah, great to have you on the show. Good to be here. Thank okay. you. God bless. God bless. Yeah.